Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to another online tournament, this time Clutch Chess uh, organized by Sound Louis Chess Club. And uh, this is the second edition. The first edition just happened uh, two weeks ago, but it was at the same time uh, when Lindores Abbey Rapid Challenge 2020 took place. So it was very difficult to focus on two tournaments. So I decided and most of the channels, I think, decided that Lindores Abbey is more important more interesting players and as in the first edition of clutch chess there are, there were only four american players and now we have a clutch chess international uh, and this time is there are no other online tournaments so this is definitely right time uh, we have eight players so here we go magnus carlsen got invitation uh, from norway also levon aronian from armenia alexander grishuk from russia and uh, Ma maxim vashiel lagraf from france and also we have four american players fabiano caruana wesley so lanier dominguez and jeffrey shong so uh, here we go also eight player knockout we start from quarterfinals, so uh, the pairing were determined by the rapid ranking uh, of of players. So as you see, Magnus Carlsen is on the on the top spot, and Fabiano Caruana uh, from the other side. So they can meet only in the final. Of course, if they win, uh, you know all the phases. So quarterfinals, then we have semifinals, and then finals. And now uh, the clutch chess prize funds. Uh, of course, this is the largest prize fund ever offered for an online chess event. That's official advertising of San Luis Chess Club. Uh, all players got $15,000 um, and then if they pass to semifinals, $25,000 and in finals, $35,000. Thousand dollars, the winner gets fifty thousand dollars. Also, they have extra rewards for winning the clutch games. And if it sounds a bit enigmatic, the clutch games I will explain in a while. But for the for the games five and six, there, there these are the special games. Uh, you can win uh, two thousand dollars per each win, and also for the games eleven and twelve, you can win three thousand dollars. And here is about more about the clutch games as you see we have uh, 12 games uh, and there are a lot of points to make not only 12 18 but they are not distributed you know equally because first four games uh, if you win first four games you get one point and then if you win the game number five or six you can get two points so even if you win first four games and you get the four points, you still can lose because uh, your opponent can win the game number five and six and he gonna get the four points as well. And moreover, most clutch points uh, means that he, he is the winner, okay? Because tie breaks rule said that the most clutch points uh, is more important than regular games. Uh, also, if everything is, you know, drawn, then we have two game blitz match uh, and then at the end Armageddon game if uh, needed. And then the games 7 to 12 are going to be played uh, in the other day. So uh, games 7 to 10 uh, are going to be uh, awarded by one point per win. Uh, but games 11 and 12, three points per win. Can you imagine that? So uh, some people said that it's not fair as Wesley. So, for example, uh, won against Fabiano Caruana in, in the first edition uh, because he won more the more clutch games. OK, he got more clutch points and Caruana won more games, but he still lost in the final. So this is quite interesting, quite exciting. Because if the player is winning and he's a huge advantage, he still can lose last two games uh, and, you know, uh, his opponent can get six points. That That's just incredible what can happen. Of course, first player who get nine and a half points is the winner of this knockout phase and advance to another stage. 
So this is all you need to know about the rules uh, and now I would like to show you the game between Magnus Carlsen who is number one in the world, who is world champion and by ranking he's ranking 2881 and I'm gonna show you the game number five. So this is clutch game and Magnus gonna play as white and his opponent Jeffrey Shonk and number five in USA and number 25 in the world. Uh, he's ranking rapid ranking 20. 730 and he's gonna play as black and the situation uh, first three games Magnus Carlsen won so he got three points and then we had the draw so three and a half to half uh, and here we have the clutch game where the winner of the any game uh, gonna get two points so that's quite exciting and if somebody can win two games that is a total of four points so that's gonna be pretty exciting so without further ado let's see what happened on the board we have knight on f3 by magnus carlsen very universal opening uh, c5 and now e4 so as you see magnus just transposed to the sicilian defense we have uh, e6 d4 c takes on d4 knight takes on d4 and now knight on f6 is possible knight on c6 is possible uh but jeffrey shong went for a6 also very popular it's like um very very early uh, Nidorf, however it has its own name and its can variation. Uh, and now we have c4, so Magnus Carlsen uh, creates Marozzi bind uh, and now he don't let actually black to play d5. d5 is a uh, very difficult when you know e4 and c4 pawns are on their places. We have knight on f6 attacking the, the pawn, we have knight on c3 and now queen on c7. a3 by Magnus Carlsen, b6 preparing to develop the light square bishop bishop on e2 bishop on b7 and now f3 strengthening this pawn structure but also slightly weakening the the position of the king we have bishop on e7 and now bishop on e3 so it's better to keep the bishop on this diagonal uh, to defend the position of the king we have castle by jeffrey and uh, castle by magnus d6 and now rook on c1 knight b on d7 and now b4 we have rook f on c8 and now magnus decided to move the king to the safety king on h1 uh, so now the, the this diagonal is quite safe for, for the for the king however uh, also magnus has to watch out you know the the first rank weaknesses we have queen on d8 and now we have one game in the database where knight on a4 was played uh, however magnus goes first for knight on b3 and after knight on e5 attacking this pawn twice uh, only now he play knight on a4 and look at this this pawn is attacked twice for now is defended twice with this move and also now what white do is uh, attacking the b6 twice okay so black have to do something about that we have knight f on d7 defending uh, and now queen on d4 and it's already third attacker on the on the b6 square so jeffrey pushed the pawn which is the best move in the position we have b5 knight on a5 so magnus could just easily go with the knight to b2 but he wants to complicate the things uh, and see who gonna calculate better we have knight on a5 uh, and now b takes on a4 would be would be really bad because after knight on b7 with attack on the queen queen c7 and black has only you know uh isolated pawns and uh, and white position of course is better so knight on c6 instead attacking the queen and forcing actually this knight to be exchanged uh, knight on b7 it looks like would be attractive but actually it's losing the pawn uh, because after knight on b7 knight on d4 and knighting d8 exchanging the queens then knight e2 with the attack on the rook so rook on c2 uh, and now bishop d8 this knight now have to move knight b2 and this knight is trapped okay but after uh, b takes on c4 rook takes on e2 black at the end all of this you know uh, complicated line have the passed pawn with the rook behind so it's a pretty good position for black and black should have no problems with winning that uh, this is why knight on c6 is played by magnus carlsen a bishop takes on c6 and now 
Uh, what white could and actually should play is knight on b2. Move this knight or move the knight uh, on c3. For example, knight on c3, uh, putting even more pressure on b5. And after b takes on c4, bishop takes on c4, play knight e5 with the attack on the bishop. Bishop e2 and for example, bishop f6. And it's pretty good position uh, for both sides. Both sides can continue. For example, queen on d2, white have some compensation with this, you know, uh, pawns on the queen side, so can create, can try to at least create the passed pawn and continue. Uh, black have the, the pawn a bit backward, but uh, but it's still everything okay with this position for black. So uh, this is what should be played, just move the knight, okay? However, Magnus Carlsen goes for c takes on b5, and it looks all good, because after bishop on b5, just exchange the rooks, uh, and now queen on d1. As the, as the bishop attacks the knight and also the bishop. So the queen has to move and defends both. And it makes quite a lot of sense. However, after queen on c7, queen on c2 is coming and what to play now. Magnus try bishop on d4, just, you know, preventing any bishop on f6. However, queen on c2 is coming anyway. Uh, and now uh, this knight is attacked twice. The bishop is also attacked twice. So bishop on b5 first, a takes on b5. And now knight b5 attacking the, the rook. So as you see, it's quite complicated. Uh, Jeffrey Shong just goes for exchange. So knight on b6, bishop on b5. And here Jeffrey exchanged the queens as well because he's gonna win the pawn anyway. So after all of these exchanges, which is which were mostly forced, queen on d1, rook on d1, and now rook c3, and there is no way to defend this pawn. Magnus tries rook on a1, but after bishop on f6, he of course uh, have to resign from from defending the pawn on a3 uh, because the threat is very simple. Rook goes to c c6, uh, attacking the bishop and also attacking the rook. Okay, so here is the problem. And if you try to move the rook, then of course you have the first rank weakness with the check. Bishop can retreat, but after bishop on d4, uh, white gonna lose the piece and, and the game. So rook on d1 by Magnus Carlsen and now rook a3. So winning the pawn, king on g1, moving from the, uh, from the corner and now rook a6, harassing the bishop. Bishop c7, now the pawn is attacked twice bishop e5 defending twice so everything is fine we have rook on c1 and now king f8 so bringing the king to the game uh, bishop a5 so locking the position of the of the pawn and the bishop and now d5 so jeffrey shong want to uh, create his first passed pawn e takes on d5 e takes on d5 and now what to play next magnus would love to go with the with the rook on c5 okay win one of the pawns that would be uh, very nice however after rook on c5 of course uh, bishop d4 with the check wins the exchange and the game so uh, not this way uh, what else can be played definitely g3 However, after king on e7, uh, black gonna have very, very active king in the center. So, for example, king on f2, king on d7, now f4, uh, bishop d4 with check, uh, king on f3, uh, and let's say rook on c6. Uh, and here is the problem. What to do with this rook? Can exchange? But then black gonna have quite easy game. Uh, the bishops are the dark square, so both sides uh, have the dark square bishop. So uh, black should win that game. Uh, if rook on e1, uh, avoiding that, that would be even worse because bishop on c3 uh, and then winning this pawn and uh, and also with the two passed pawn, it's even easier to win. So uh, Magnus goes for king on f1 uh, and let black actually to take on h2, which Jeffrey of course took. And now black can create another passed pawn on the on the king side. So uh, here is the problem. For now, Magnus goes uh, for rook on c5. He want to create his own passed pawn as the counterplay. Uh, but now we have rook on e6 and asking Magnus, okay, you can take even both pawns. Do you want that? Uh, but Magnus, of course, see that uh, if bishop on g3 is coming, then in next move, we're gonna have a checkmate. So that would be very, very, you know, uh, interesting end of the game. But uh, 
Magnus is the world champion for a reason and he plays g4 making a space for the for the king uh, and now we have d4 so uh, running with the passed pawn we have rook on b5 creating the passed pawn as a counterplay uh, on his own and now d3 running still running uh, rook on d5 uh, attacking the pawn but of course rook on d6 defending uh, because the rook has defense okay we have rook on d6 bishop on d6 and here very interesting critical moment of the game what would you play as white in this position to draw the game you don't have a chance to to win that that game but you have to be very precise to have the chance to draw this game uh, so what Magnus should play here in this position is King F2 and go as fast as possible with the with the move King on E3 and win this pawn. It's 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 extremely uh, important. And now if Bishop on F4, which makes a lot of sense, okay, uh, creating the wall here, uh, then B5 only then run with the with the passed pawn, okay. And for example, King on E8, B6, King on D7 b7 and now if king on c6 uh, then simply bishop d2 attack this bishop okay bishop cannot take because of the promotion so bishop on b8 but now king e3 uh win this pawns and that's uh that's probably a draw so uh, this was one way if g5 here preventing any moves like you know bishop on d2 uh then white what white can do is actually make the queen create the queen and after bishop on b8 king e3 and now win this pawn okay so this way or another uh, white actually have a chance here so for example f5 uh, and then the game can continue of course okay but what else can be played if king on f2 is played uh jeffrey shong in the gameplay g6 with the plan of h5 and creating another passed pawn uh, and here if he tried g6 also king e3 wins this pawn okay uh, and then after h5 just pick up this pawn uh, and white gonna be always on time to stop this uh, also as you see two pawns against two pawns so uh, there is no way that black can win that so it seems like king on f2 was a very very important move however magnus went for b5 immediately and this makes actually a uh, quite different situation we have g6 we have b6 uh, king on e8 b7 king on d7 and now bishop on b4 uh, attacking the bishop of course it cannot be taken because of the promotion uh, so bishop on b8 and only now king f2 so it looks like everything is the same correct but actually not because now we have h5 by jeffrey shong g takes on f5 g takes on f5 and now king on e3 doesn't work because h4 and this pawn is much faster it cannot be stopped as this diagonal is controlled by the bishop okay so it's not possible so magnus carlsen play bishop on e1 trying to stop both of the of the pawns but now simply h4 king on g2 and now king c6 going after this pawn which cannot be defended king on h3 king b7 and now if magnus takes the pawn he's losing this is the problem because bishop f4 and if, if he goes after the bishop simply d2 uh, and this is winning the game okay king f5 bishop c3 and look at this this is the this is the wall uh so uh black gonna easily win this game so uh it's not possible this is why king on g4 but after bishop on g3 magnus carlsen resigned the game he resigned because he has to move the bishop so bishop on d2 and after f5 he cannot take this this pawn of course because of the of the promotion so uh king on h3 and now king cc just bring this king to the game uh this way uh, and win the game okay king g2 uh, but it's simply uh, winning the game so this is why in this position Magnus Carlsen resigned the game I would like to just show you one more uh, one more thing that uh, in this position Magnus Carlsen uh, play king on f2 uh, which was too late bishop on d2 could be maybe slightly better but it's still losing because after h5 g takes on f5 g takes on f5 uh, and now king on f2 it's still not enough king c6 
King e3 losing for the same reason, just it's it's just too fast, cannot be stopped as this bishop controls the diagonal, so not this way. But king on g2 going after this pawn also doesn't work, just is uh, quite more complicated because now after king on c6, king h3, king b7, king h4 and king c6, king h5 can be taken, now king d5, king g5 going after this pawn and it looks like a uh, white actually you know gonna manage to do something however king c4 uh, going after the bishop uh, king f6 king b3 king f7 uh, king c2 bishop has to be moved uh, bishop e3 but now bishop e5 you see already the plan if, if it's f4 uh, then bishop d4 and the bishop uh, has to be exchanged so that is the problem uh, and of course we have the promotion and win the game uh, and if king on e6 for example attacking this bishop then bishop can actually go to b2 and after f4 bishop c1 okay and if the bishop is moved then of course promotion so after exchanging it looks like it can be a draw theoretical draw the problem is after f7 if you remember from theory uh, h pawn f pawn f c pawn and a pawn this should be a draw however if the king is closer in this case queen d8 wins the game okay in the next move uh, queen goes to f8 uh, and it's of course winning for black so uh, there was no way to play you know king f2 it was already too, a too late a bishop on d2 also didn't help so the only way to win actually this is uh, instead of playing b5 first play king on f2 and only then run with the pawn and that would be a draw okay so here we go i would like to show you what happened uh, in the clutch chess uh, magnus carlsen then uh, after losing a uh, draw another clutch game and as you see jeffrey shonk managed to get three and a half points uh, magnus carlsen four and a half but jeffrey shonk won one of the clutch games uh, so he got awarded with two thousand uh, dollars and also wesley so also won one of the clutch uh, bonus two thousand uh, dollars but he won more games uh, five and a half to two and a half against Maxime Vachel Lagraf. So that's what we had yesterday. Today, another round and another pairings. Um, we have Alexander Grishuk, Levon Aronian and Linier Dominguez Fabiano Caruana. So if you like this video, press like. If for some reason you don't like it, press unlike. And of course, let me know what you think about this clutch games format because it's pretty crazy some of the games are you know uh, rewarded with the two points some of them are three points uh, definitely the players have to play under huge pressure at the end they have they can have a good tournament win a lot of games but at the end you know losing one or two games that would be a disaster let me know in the comment what you think about that and if you don't want to miss other games from that tournament Press subscribe, smash the bell button, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.